Welcome Detroit Mercy undergraduates and graduate students, families, friends, and all connecting with us today for the 2021 McNichols Campus Commencement Ceremony. My name is Pamela Zarkowski, and I am Provost and Vice President for Academic Affairs. I am honored to have the privilege to welcome you to today's ceremony. A special welcome to all the students. We are so glad to have you join us as we celebrate your achievements. It is wonderful your family and friends from across the United States and internationally can participate in this event as you receive your degree from Detroit Mercy. I also wanna welcome the faculty, staff, and administrators joining us today. Today, you will receive your bachelor's, master's, specialist's, or doctoral degree. What an incredible achievement. We are so proud and grateful for your determination and hard work. Your spirit was inspiring to all of us, especially over the last year. Although this commencement ceremony is not the one you had anticipated when you began your studies at Detroit Mercy, we hope that you enjoy this virtual ceremony. We are excited that you will have an opportunity to visit the McNichols campus and celebrate with your individual colleges and schools and the faculty and staff that have been integral to your educational and student experiences. Nothing can take away from the incredible achievement of completing your degrees and certificates. You have remained resilient and focused on your educational goals. You have continued to demonstrate excellence in your academics, athletics, service, and leadership. This is indicative of your character and drive. We are excited to see what the future holds for you. We know you will continue to succeed in achieving your personal and career goals and wish you all the best in your future endeavors. Now let's celebrate this special occasion and all you have accomplished during your time at Detroit Mercy. Today's commencement program is available on the official Detroit Mercy commencement website. Our ceremony will begin with an invocation. Graduates, recalling the ways that you have shown resilience, perseverance, adaptability, and growth during your time at Detroit Mercy, we now offer this prayer and blessing to mark your accomplishments and to sustain you as you enter the next stage of your life journey. As together we pray, most, most compassionate and merciful Creator, we gather today in celebration and thanksgiving for this significant transition in our students' lives. In gratitude, we acknowledge that this transition will allow them an opportunity to use the education, talents, and skills they have acquired to become persons for and with others and to lead lives marked by compassion. And now, let us raise our hands to bless the graduates. Spirit of life and love, who quickens our minds, inspires our hearts, and animates our action, we ask that you bless the graduating class of 2021. Class of 2021, may you be infused with a lifelong love of learning as you call to mind what you have gleaned from your years at Detroit Mercy, from professors, mentors, peers, and the community, from the time you have taken for reflection and prayer. May you continue to cultivate the gifts you have unearthed as you discern how to offer these to the world. May you be blessed with a capacity to see the sacred in all, so as to see God as easily in the eyes of those who are poor and excluded as in the great wonders of the cosmos. And may such vision inspire in your respect and reverence for all persons and for our common home. May you move in the world with a deep sense of concern for the dwelling place of the holy and compassion for those persons and places where such presence feels hidden. May your encounters with family and friends, with acquaintances and strangers, reflect awareness of your dignity and theirs. And may this guide the choices you make and the path that you take as you move forward into tomorrow. 
May your hearts be filled with hope as you face obstacles and challenges, opportunities and possibilities that invite you to grow ever more fully into the person you desire to be. And may the lives and example of Catherine McCauley and Ignatius of Loyola continue to inspire you to a life marked by a well-educated solidarity, a thirst for justice, and a deep sense of gratitude for all things. Amen. Thank you, Dr. Punsalan Manlimos and Ms. Klug. On behalf of the Board of Trustees and the faculty and staff of University of Detroit Mercy, I extend my sincere congratulations to you, the graduating class of 2021, and also to your parents and families, relatives, spouses, and friends who have supported you during your undergraduate and graduate education. I begin by telling you a few important facts about your graduating class. First, you are the second largest McNichols campus graduating class in six years, 1,155 undergraduates and graduates. And like many previous classes of baccalaureate, masters, and doctoral graduates, your class is similar in some ways and diverse in others, particularly with respect to your ages, gender, and hometowns. Second, 78% of the baccalaureate degree graduates, 520 of 664, are 25 years old or younger. The youngest member of your class is 20 years old, and the most mature is in the late 60s. Among the graduate degree graduates, two-thirds of the master's and specialist graduates, 302 of the 456, are under the age of 30, and the most seasoned graduate is in the early 70s. And among our 35 doctoral graduates, their ages range from 26 years old to the 60s. Third, 64% of this undergraduate, graduate, and doctoral class are women, and 36% are men. And nearly 85%, 978 of our 1,155 graduates are from Michigan. Among the other 15% of graduates from other parts of the country and the world, 44 are from 19 other states, and 133 are from 18 countries, including Bangladesh, Belize, Canada, China, India, Iran, Jamaica, Kenya, Korea, Lebanon, Liberia, Libya, Lithuania, Mexico, Nigeria, Pakistan, Russia, and Slovenia. Your diverse ages, gender, and hometown similarities and differences have hopefully provided you with a rich educational experience that you will treasure for the rest of your lives and use well in your professions, careers, and the communities where you will live and serve. Fifteen months ago, your lives and everyone else's lives around the world suddenly paused because of the COVID-19 virus. While other parts of the world endured pandemics before, very few people in the United States had ever experienced such a catastrophic event. More than 600,000 Americans and more than 3 million people in other parts of the world have lost their lives thus far because of this dreaded virus. And I know that many of you, as well as our faculty and staff, have lost family members, friends, and coworkers. I offer my sincere condolences to you and your families, and I hope that you will find comfort in the wonderful memories they left behind. As we celebrate your achievement today, I commend you on your academic success over the years, but especially over these last few semesters. I know that it was not easy transitioning from in-person to virtual classes, and it was even more difficult for you not being with your classmates every day. But you persevered and kept your attention focused on your goal of graduation. You also made significant adjustments and sacrifices in your life and within your families to achieve this important goal. But there is no doubt in my mind that you will be stronger and more successful as a result of the challenges you have experienced during this pandemic. Your strength and future success will come primarily from the empathy that you have shown to and for others over these last several months. The following quote of a well-known American 
that summarizes this message of empathy that I am conveying. Nobody cares how much you know until they know how much you care. Let me repeat that. Nobody cares how much you know until they know how much you care. Throughout this health crisis, you and many others have expressed and exhibited tremendous empathy for so many who have become extremely sick because of the virus. You have shown empathy for those who have lost their jobs and their homes, empathy for families and children who do not know when they will have their next meal, empathy for those who are lonely and separated from their families, empathy for those who cannot obtain a vaccine because they have no transportation, empathy for the homeless, and empathy in so many other ways. But you have responded by raising funds and volunteering to minimize the burden on so many individuals through initiatives at the university and in your communities and places of worship. Those acts of kindness and caring are fundamental elements of University of Detroit Mercy's mission of service and social justice. And we are confident that you will continue to show that same empathy in the professions you have chosen to pursue. Nobody cares how much you know until they know how much you care. The famous American who said that quote was President Theodore Teddy Roosevelt Jr., the 26th president of the United States who served this country from 1901 to 1909. Roosevelt remains the youngest ever president of this country at the age of 42. As we anticipate the eventual conclusion of this pandemic, in part because of the availability of vaccines, remain close to your alma mater and your school or college as you join more than 100,000 distinguished alumni in every state and territory, as well as 87 countries. You too will bring distinction to the university and your professions as you make a difference in this nation and the world. Congratulations and much success, graduates, and may God's blessings be with you and your families always. At this time, I'm pleased to announce the recipients of the Undergraduate and Graduate Student Mission Leadership Awards. The Vivere Ex Missioni Award, which means to live the mission, is presented to graduating students who best exemplify the mission of Detroit Mercy and demonstrate a commitment to academic excellence, concern for the whole person, service that leads to justice, recognition of the sacred in all things, and building a community of equity and inclusivity. Faculty, staff, and students submit nominations based on those guiding values. The nominations are reviewed and awardees are selected by the Mission Effectiveness Team. Along with the certificate, a mission lamp is presented to recognize that the student is, and I quote, a shining lamp giving light to all around us. As the foundress of the Sisters of Mercy, Catherine McCauley said we should strive to be. This year's recipient of the undergraduate Vivere Ex Missioni Award is Amber Abram. Servant leadership is a hallmark of a Detroit Mercy education, and it is a trait that defines biology student Amber Abram's undergraduate years. An excellent student in our Rebuild Detroit program, Amber is also a welcoming, open presence at many on-campus programs. She is committed to advancing her academic development, professional career, leadership skills, and knowledge of diversity-related topics through our participation in several programs dedicated to diversity and inclusion. As a mentor with the TRIO Student Support Services and the Writing Center's Bridges Not Fences events, she shared her story of facing racism and the imposter syndrome she feels as a first-generation college student. She has worked with the university's Hive Pantry, and community gardens to address food equity issues. Amber is active with the Black Student Union, is a presidential ambassador, and volunteered to care for the dying through a hospice organization. As a mentor at the Writing Center, she guided students to greater success by showing empathy, respect, and patience. Additionally, she is an unassuming role model for all students through her work ethic, commitment to equity, and compassion for all. For those reasons, University of Detroit Mercy is proud to award the 2021 Vivere Ex Missione Award for an undergraduate student to Amber Abram. Congratulations, Amber. 
This year's recipient of the Graduate Vivere Ex Missioni Award is Maureen Murphy. The healthcare worker of today needs to be an innovator and leader who sees the big picture and understands that there is more than one way to achieve the best outcome. Maureen Murphy, who graduates today as a doctor of nursing practice, is that person. Maureen has been working in healthcare since she earned her Bachelor of Science in Nursing degree from Detroit Mercy in 1993. She is well known and respected across the state for her work in school-based health centers because she shares the lessons learned by her compassionate approach to caring for patients. As a nurse practitioner in the River Rouge community, she strives to minimize healthcare disparities as she cares for vulnerable adolescents. Her doctoral project uses an innovative model to address immunization access issues in that community. The project also provided food and other important resources for the clients. Maureen's work begins with strong leadership skills and building a team whose members understand their roles and the unique needs of the community. Care is given in the spirit of cultural humility. She is an advocate for families and engages policymakers at the local and state level to promote justice and ensure equitable resources. Her reputation has led to strong relationships within the nursing leadership community in southeastern Michigan and highlights the quality of a Detroit Mercy education. For those reasons, University of Detroit Mercy is proud to present the 2021 Vivere Ex Missioni Award for graduate student to Maureen Murphy. Congratulations, Maureen. It is now my honor to present our honorary degree candidate and commencement speaker. Richard Dick Charlton has devoted much of his life as a leader in the financial industry. Because of his trademark forward thinking and innovation, he has received national honors. And through his philanthropic giving to University of Detroit Mercy, he is ensuring that more people will use those same attributes to make the field more ethical and inclusive in the future. Mr. Charlton is a 1965 graduate of the University of Detroit's College of Engineering and Science and earned an MBA from Wayne State University. In 1986, after obtaining experience at Michigan Bell, AT&T, and Merrill Lynch Capital Markets, he founded New England Pension Consultants. Today, NEPC, as it is now called, is one of the largest and most well-known consulting firms in the industry. And Charlton continues to serve as its chairman emeritus. He is an in-demand across the country as a speaker and has earned many honors for the ethical leadership he demonstrates in the field. Early in his career, Mr. Charlton believed it was important that the people in management positions at the companies he worked for should be representative of the community they served. He worked to achieve that goal, which led to a lifetime focus on creating opportunities for women and minorities. In 2019, Mr. Charlton established the Charlton Center for Ethical Investing with a $3 million gift to the College of Business Administration. It is the largest ever gift to the university from a living alumnus. The center, one of several centers of excellence at the university, recruits minority students into the financial markets field by providing scholarships and partnerships with institutional investment companies. The center also hosts a speaker series of prominent investment experts and provides programmatic support for finance students to participate in investment competitions and visit financial industry leaders. The university and Mr. Charlton expect the center to make a direct and measurable impact on the recruitment of minority students into the financial service industries for many years. For those reasons and many more, University of Detroit Mercy is proud to bestow Richard M. Charlton with this honorary degree. By virtue of the authority vested in me, I confer upon Richard M. Charlton the degree of Doctor of Humane Letters, honoris causa. Congratulations, Mr. Charlton. We'll now hear from Mr. Charlton as he addresses our students and guests. Thank you, Dr. Garibaldi, for that very kind and gracious introduction. And good morning, my fellow graduates, esteemed faculty and guests of the University of Detroit Mercy. Greetings from a mechanical engineer, class of 1965, and a 15-year resident of the city of Detroit. 
I'm honored to address you on this very special occasion. And while I wish that we could do this in person, I'm pleased to celebrate with you in spirit. So congratulations to you on this momentous day. Collectively, your faculty, staff, and fellow graduates are very proud of your accomplishments and look ahead to the bright futures that await each and every one of you. As we look ahead into your opportunities, we must also look back at the hardship that we faced over this past year as the COVID-19 pandemic wreaked havoc on our worlds. We've lost so many and so much during this time. Here in the United States alone, over 30 million people have been infected and more than 550,000 have died. By far the highest, highest death toll in the world, accounting for 20% of the nearly two and a half million virus casualties. The pandemic has exposed the vast disparities that plague every facet of our life, in particular the wealth gap and its resulting inequities across race, gender, housing, healthcare, education, income, and employment opportunities. We have a housing boom in many areas of the country and soup kitchens in so many others. Access to COVID-19 vaccines in affluent communities and scarcity in underserved areas. The U.S. equity markets are at all-time highs, while many communities, industries, and their former employees face truly bleak futures and long-term unemployment. But even before the virus outbreak, minorities and women have been disproportionately affected. In 2019, the poverty rate was nearly 19% for Blacks and 16% for Hispanics, unduly large shares of impoverishment relative to their representation in our country's overall population. In the corporate sector, there are only four black CEOs in a Fortune 500, while women currently hold but 8% of the CEO positions in the S&P 500 companies. It's natural to be discouraged by these inequalities and to feel dispirited about the uneven economic recovery. It's also daunting to enter the workforce today, and I'm sure that when you dreamt of the world that you would enter upon graduation, this is not the world that you imagined. If there's only one takeaway for you from my talk today, please let it be this message. You have got this. Yes, my friends, you have got this. You will emerge better and stronger from the pandemic, not despite the events of the last 14 months, but because of them. After all, it's when we're alone that we realize the strength of human connections. It's when we look injustice in the eye that we shake off our complacency and fight for what is just. And it's often when we're the most vulnerable that incredible opportunities come our way. When you combine your hard-earned perspectives with the power of your degree and the Catholic values and ethics that have structured your education, you will see that you have all that you need to succeed in the world beyond Detroit Mercy. Be bold, be confident, and you will find the door of opportunity opening wider every day, and that you, as graduates of this university, one of the top 200 in the country, enjoy a serious competitive edge. And when you land that opportunity, if you haven't already, I want you to remember the second takeaway. Close the gap. Remember the inequalities I talked about earlier? Well, it's up to you to do something about them. My first job after graduating in 1965 was at Michigan Bell Telephone, part of Ma Bell, then the world's largest company. In fact, its pension funds alone would have ranked it as the eighth largest country in the world. I was in a fast track program that took me to management employment a few years in to recruit employees into the firm. My boss and I sat down and began our year together by comparing the demographics of our management complement to those of the public that we serve. And guess what? We didn't look at all like our service community. So we set out to chip away at the gap and ultimately hired more African-Americans and women in percentage and absolute terms than any other Bell System operating company. Took a lot of work because graduating seniors were street smart and they knew full well that Ma Bell had previously demonstrated little interest in diversity. So we took our mission into the neighborhoods, we knocked on doors, we worked with guidance counselors and parents to get graduates to come out to our interviews. The numbers that we posted looked good. It seemed like a good success story, but were they really? Or were we merely stacking the deck to make the scorecard look good? Well, for that answer, we look back some 10 years later and confirmed that the talent that we successfully recruited was extremely competitive, including several individuals who had risen into the executive levels of Michigan Bell and Ameritech, its successor, along with Bob Hurst, the only African-American ever to become president of a Bell operating subsidiary. The message, my fellow graduates, is that here today, as you look out at an imposing and uncertain world, you are far, far more competitive than you realize. 
In fact, it took me way too long to appreciate. In fact, shortly after I was transferred out east to AT&T for a tour with a parent company, a necessity at that time to get one's ticket punched, my sponsor at Michigan Bell passed away unexpectedly. It took me fully two or three years to understand that my lifeline had been cut and that I was out of sight and out of mind back here in Detroit. So I very reluctantly decided to shed the golden handcuffs that come with a 17-year career with the world's largest company, a utility with the security of cradle-to-grave employment, to join Merrill Lynch as an investment consultant. It wasn't easy, and I had enormous doubts, but it worked. In New England alone, we successfully doubled our business for four consecutive years, leading to a family relocation to a Boston suburb. And then, just as everything was going really well, Merrill sold its consulting business to our largest competitor. I declined an invitation to head up that business in New England on behalf of the acquiring firm and struck out on my own, successfully converting 100% of my former clients to my new company, New England Pension Consultants. And then, as they say, the rest is history. We now have seven offices throughout the United States, some 330 employees, 46 partners, and over $1.3 trillion in assets under advisement. Yes, my fellow graduates, you are far more competitive and better educated and far better prepared to successfully compete than you realize. However, the opportunities that you can access through your degree must, from Detroit Mercy must come with a responsibility. You have to be part of the solution. Closing the gap has to be integral to your life's mission. The good news is that in today's world, you can merge that mission with financial, professional, and social success. While the pandemic laid bare the pervasive inequities that surround us, it has also brought heightened awareness. And now more than ever, there's an increasing sensitivity from companies and institutions of the need to do more. Both the public and private sectors are realizing the importance of diversity and inclusion and are beginning to champion change in the workplace, especially if there's a potential payoff that comes with doing the right thing. McKinsey, for example, recently found that the greater the representation, the higher the likelihood of outperformance. In their research, they found that the most gender diverse companies outperformed the least gender diverse companies by almost 50%. That research went on to suggest that narrowing the gender gap by 2025, just four years from now, has the potential to add an additional $12 trillion to our global GDP. And closer to home, I'm confident that we're going to see success with the Charlton Center for Responsible Investing in Detroit Mercy. Be it through social, the Social Innovation Fund that will provide startup funding to minority enterprises, or through intern programs that provide on-the-job experience to current students, our goal is to expose your college mates to the workings of the financial world. At NAPC, our diverse manager policy spells out our commitment to identify minority and women-owned firms to invest assets for our clients. And today, roughly 40% of our 335 clients have hired diverse investment managers to manage their billions of dollars. So you see, it does pay to do the right thing. In closing, my hope for you is that you use the powers that you acquired during your four years at uh, Detroit Mercy for the better good. Use your voice to say your truth and speak for those who cannot speak for themselves. Use your strength to lift yourselves up and also to raise those less able. I end with the inspiring words of youth poet laureate Amanda Gorman. For there is always light, if only we're brave enough to see it, if only we're brave enough to be it. Be the better good and shine on Detroit Mercy. Thank you very much. I am sure a lot of us are all dressed up behind our screens and then a good handful of us are still in our PJs. Whatever the case may be, congratulations, class of 2021. I hope that got a few laughs. A little bit about myself. Like many of my graduating peers, I am a first generation student. My family and I immigrated from the small country of Bangladesh in Southern Asia when I was four. And I was raised in the Bronx, New York until the week before PTV of 2017 when we moved to Michigan. All of my cousins and I are first generation students. Our dads have been taxi cab drivers, assembly workers, or waiters. This day, this speech, this degree is to show my cousins back home, my cousins here, 
and anyone who is struggling and questioning themselves to get a degree that it is worth it, you are worthy, and you are capable. My cousins and I learned to make the best with the little we had and find light and hope when the world seemed a little too dark, like it currently does. It has been a tough year for many in many lights, injustices that have been hidden within society have surfaced and continue to surface as we all actively advocate and fight for change so that we all feel voiced, included, and valued. One thing that Detroit Mercy has taught me in the past four years is that no matter the effort, no matter the drive, no matter the action, the smallest act can lead to change. Detroit Mercy, although small, is large in the scale of opportunities. Whether that opportunity be professional, personal, or spiritual, the doors are open for us and will stay open until we are ready to tackle the challenge. As we all embrace our bright future, when it gets tough or when you find yourself questioning, remember that you graduated in the middle of a pandemic. Remember that God, Allah, says, with hardship comes ease. We can only get stronger from here. At the university, we begin to know who we are. Who are we? What are we? What do we stand for? What do we want to stand for? And what positive impact are we making? And are we doing service? These are questions we answered as undergraduates and will continue to answer as we approach our professions and become members of society who revolve around service because our years in Detroit Mercy taught us how valuable and indispensable service truly is. We conquered these last few semesters full of anxiety, stress, and doubt under a pandemic to get this degree. We crawled to get this degree. We are leaders. Make sure you tell yourself that. I want to thank the many individuals and organizations who have helped me grow as I, like many of you all, navigated through the unsturdy waters of the university years. I am thankful to TRIO, Upward Bound, Student Life, the Science, Race, and Technology Learning Community, the Writing Center, Women's and Gender Studies, the Education Department, and most importantly, the amazing English Department for making me who I am today. I want to thank Detroit Mercy for providing us with countless opportunities to become the strong, giving, and aware individuals we have slowly become. I wholeheartedly and warmly congratulate all of my peers. Congratulations, class of 2021. Every graduation, we look for things that mark this day, this year. Well, this past year has certainly been marked in history. The issues we have confronted are byproducts of decades of decisions and policymaking. These are issues that have revealed the flaws in our systems. We should all see this past year as an opportunity to challenge the things we have taken for granted for so long. These are the things that have prevented us from reaching a future that is equitable and healthier for all people. With this in mind, I would like to leave you with three thoughts. First, our job is to instill the ability in you to be self-critical and self-reflective in everything you do. We ask you to self-reflect on what you do and then self-correct on how you do it. In fact, it means very little if you self-reflect and do nothing about it. You are entering a time where reflection and action are vital. Second, you always have a home here at the School of Architecture. Though you have graduated, we can still be a part of your continual growth and aspirations. And why not be a part of the growth and aspirations of our future students? Third, the crises of this past year have ignored property lines, building codes, local and national political boundaries. You have been prepared to confront these situations. The architects, and the community developer's ethical responsibility is to a world that does not see boundaries between properties, neighborhoods, cities and towns, states and nations. 
you are entering a time where you must uphold this responsibility. I started these brief comments asking us to see the past year as an opportunity to challenge the things we have accepted for so long. The things we take for granted are the things that hold us back. We can honor our heritage without being constrained by it. You are entering a time where you could truly shape change in the world around you. I urge all of you to be the people who dream and implement new ways forward for our cities that learn from this past year to build a better resilient quality of life for all people, period, whether they live in Detroit, Metro Detroit, or beyond. We look forward to seeing your contributions in the future. Congratulations to all of you. Candidates, please rise. President Garibaldi, on behalf of the School of Architecture, I have the honor to present these candidates for the degree of Master of Architecture, Master of Community Development, Bachelor of Science in Architecture Honors Program, Bachelor of Science in Architecture, and recommend that such degrees be conferred upon them. Now that the candidates have been recognized, a very solemn moment is about to take place, the conferral of degrees. This marks the official moment when graduation actually occurs. By virtue of the authority vested in me, I confer upon you the bachelor's, master's, specialist, and doctoral degrees for which you have been recommended, and now pronounce you sons and daughters of University of Detroit Mercy forever. As a sign of the granting of your degree, if you are wearing a cap, now is a time when you can move your tassel from the right to the left side. Please join us wherever you are watching to congratulate our graduates. It is now time to recognize our graduates individually. Following the presentation, we will conclude with a message from one of our alumni and a celebratory video and photo montage of messages for our graduates. Enjoy. Galal Abdullah. Mark Also Brooks. Dana Anderson. Adrian Ayers. Connor Barbara. Ferdinand Bartolone. Joshua Blackburn. Bianca Brahimir. Natalie Can. Jude Chaban. David Clark. Corzell Co. Rodrigo Corrigan. Alice Cox. Omari Kroom. DeRoss Cullens. Tiffany Dang. Alexis Davis. Shajnin Dristi. Sabine Dusharn. Rachel Getleth. Madison Girolamo. Alyssa Jacobs. Emma Jeffrey. Maria Jose. Shalale Kasebi. Brianna Kavalitz. Ali Kalaf. Taylor Kyle. Austin Kolazar. Linda Lanou. Angela Lazardi. Joseph Loria. Mona Mackey. Stephen Malbuff. Alexander Mastrucerio. 
Mitchell Maxwell Ian McCain John Ann McNeil Andrew Miller Bavisha Mystery Christopher Morrison Tatiana Murad Donna Murray Brown Casey Nurnberger Onaba Kadir Nive Perryman Emmanuel Pila Mira Pittman Patrick Rogers Christian Rose Albert Saktaleben Travis Schroeder Joseph Silvera Courtney Smalley Ba Amat Sona Drew Sovereign Danielle Spencer Ray Stoser Natea Tavernier Mackenzie Urban Kyle Valentage Anthony Vinoy Joseph White Rachel Whiteman Natalie Wilson Justin Wolschlager Ryan Yonan Colleen Young Gia Yu Jordan Zanier On behalf of the entire Detroit Mercy alumni community, congratulations on the class of 2021. My name is Dominic Gray, and I'm a 1996 Master of Business Administration graduate, and I'm also the CEO of Center City Communications, and I'm happy to be here with you today. Today, you have become a member of a strong and active alumni community that boasts a membership of over 88,000 alumni, and you will find that the members to be passionate, um, members of their alma mater, and more importantly, passionate about helping others. Uh, you're not leaving Detroit Mercy. You're just transitioning to the best version of yourself. So be that best version. Uh, as you go into the world, I would suggest that you don't be afraid to express your ideas, your goals, and know your value. You should be mindful of the help and support that you've received from family and friends and at Detroit Mercy. And in your lifetime, you will be fundamentally changed um, by the things that will be happening around you and how you live, you work, you play. Uh, for example, in your lifetime, you will see the transition from electric charging stations taking place of traditional gas stations. Um, the last time that has occurred was in the horse and buggy age uh, that was displaced by the combustion engine. So this is an exciting time for you. With all the changes happening in the world right now, uh, your career opportunities, your quality of life, the ability to truly connect and give back to your community will be extremely bright. Start thinking about how can I help my community adjust to these changes. Know that you can count on your fellow alumni for support, encouragement, and assistance through your Forever Titans platform, and know that you have the opportunity, and quite frankly, the responsibility of providing assistance to your current students whenever possible. Please join Forever Titans platform and learn about the many engagement opportunities. Most importantly, go after your dreams. Do not settle. Um, life will only give what you ask of it. No more, no less. So go after it. Again, congratulations to the class of 2021. Thank you for everyone for this commencement cele celebration and welcome to the alumni community graduates. And by the way, go Titans. Congratulations, class of 2021.
we are so proud of you. So on behalf of the administration, congratulations on earning your degree. We wish you continued success in whatever path your life takes. Congratulations! Congratulations, congratulations School of Architecture graduates. I want to congratulate all of the architecture graduate students for this great accomplishment. Congratulations. Congratulations. As students or graduates, you are what guides and drives us every day. We look forward to seeing your future contributions in our neighborhoods, cities, and towns. Once again, congratulations. Congratulations, congratulations class of 2021.